Amin Allah sembah amin Pura mungkin gela-gela kedoa Allah berkat rahmat Allah yang amri nangra Aceh ama musila sejahtera Jombe hati ketika musala putih ngana yang gue tak kuningan mise. Hana jantan teh kiamadonya putih ngana yang gue tak kuningan mise. Hantam tak jombe hati kamu salah putih ngana yang gue tak kuning kuningan mise.
Selamat pagi semuanya dan selamat datang di Google for Indonesia. Oh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here today with all of you. Welcome to Google for Indonesia. You know, this is the second time we're running this event and it's just so fantastic to see so many friends, family and familiar faces in the audience. And I wanted to thank you for coming to be here today with us as we lay out why Google is so excited to be part of this digitally dynamic country. Now, I've been the managing director for Google in Indonesia since the beginning of last year. And in that short time, I've witnessed a tremendous amount of change. You know, in just the last year and a half, smartphone penetration in Indonesia has jumped from 47% of the population to 60% according to our consumer barometer research. You know, that's tens of millions of people coming online. And the fastest, we've, fastest growth we've seen in Indonesia since Google opened an office here in 2011. Those numbers are pretty incredible. But you know, there are still more than 100 million people in Indonesia who don't have access to the internet. Now we're here today to talk a little bit about our ongoing work to try to help, as well as share some of the progress we've made on the initiatives we talked about when we got together last year. 
Now at Google, our goal is to build technology not just for a few people, but for everyone. We want everyone coming online to get as much out of the internet as you and I do. Now our approach to this is pretty simple. We believe that everyone should have three things. One, access to the internet. That means physically connecting people to the World Wide Web. Two, products that provide the information and tools they need. Now we have executives here today from YouTube, Waze and Allo and Search to talk about how we're helping make our products work better for Indonesians. And thirdly, we need platforms so they can make the internet their own. And we're going to cover some of the programs to empower Indonesian businesses and developers to expand their businesses, their presence, and maximize the global reach of the internet. So let's start with access to the internet. You know, there are so many barriers to getting a good connection to the internet here in Indonesia. And working across 17,000 islands means there's not necessarily an easy, simple, single way to tackle this. So to improve connectivity, we need a product that's simple and fast and scalable. And that product is Google Station. Now, Google Station is a public Wi-Fi platform that delivers a fast, simple, and reliable connection so more people can benefit from all that the internet has to offer. Now, right now, in India, we have millions of people getting along getting online every day on Google Station. Now this Wi-Fi is so fast that you can not only just check your email, send messages to family and friends, you can update all of your apps, and most importantly, you can stream high-definition video without waiting. Yeah. So today, we have some big news. Google Station is coming to Indonesia. So the first Google Station site will be launching soon around Jakarta, and then coming soon to Surabaya, Denpasar, Bandung, and many other cities outside of Jakarta. Imagine being a university student and able to stream some educational videos on campus, yeah? or a factory worker who goes down to his local Alun Alun to do some online shopping. And thanks to our great partners at CBN and Fiberstar, we'll be rolling out Google Station to hundreds of venues across Java and Bali in the first year alone. Now we're bringing together our technology and our partners' established infrastructure to make free public Wi-Fi available to millions of Indonesians. Yeah. Now, I'd like to ask Caesar Sengupta, Google's vice president of our Next Billion Users Initiative, to please come up on stage and help me thank our new partners. Caesar, please come on up. Welcome. Thanks. Yeah. And now, let's welcome to the stage Pat Sugihato Dama Kasuma, president and director of Fiberstar, and Pat. Axton Salim, representing the Salim Group. Gentlemen, please join us. We'd also like to offer you a token of our appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. Now, connectivity is only as good as what you can do with it. Now, once connected, you want access to information and an ability to change the internet. So we need Google's products and platforms to empower Indonesians to make the most of the internet, whether that's by finding new customers, telling and sharing unique stories, or building new apps of their own. So when it comes to products, we've got some key announcements today from our keynote speakers across Search, Allo, Waze, and YouTube. 
and you'll hear more about all of these announcements from the very product leads who have been working on these products. So both Google Station and improving our products for Indonesians are part of our ongoing efforts to help accelerate the country's digital transformation. But it's just as important as making Indonesians shape the internet to make it their own. And we have a huge role to play to make sure that Indonesians know how to get the most out of Google's own platforms, like Android. You know, Android is on two billion devices globally, and many of those are right here in Indonesia. Now, it's an open source platform that has enabled hundreds of thousands of people to create games and apps that can help them earn a living and provide one for many, many more. So we've taken several steps to help underpin the new economy, starting with a commitment to train 100,000 Indonesian mobile developers by 2020, which we announced last year when President Jokowi visited our head office in California. You may remember we announced it at this event last year. Well, I'm happy to report that we're well on our way to reaching our goal. We've already been able to train 25,000 developers. Yeah. This is huge progress, and it's just the beginning. We've been able to make progress through a few key efforts. Yeah? We've partnered with Udacity to provide online courses in Bahasa, Indonesia. Yeah? And this year, we've funded 500 scholarships for the Associate Android Certification, one of our larger initiatives will, which will help these developers find jobs in the near future. Now, we're joined today by the first Google Certified Developers in Indonesia. So let's give them a round of applause. Huh? So we're also investing in classroom education, yeah, partnering with universities such as Institute, Bandung, um, Institute Technology Bandung, pardon me, Telkom University and others, to incorporate the Android Developer Fundamentals course into their final year curricula. And we hope that learning to build with the latest technology under the supervision of trained faculty at top universities will help fill the talent gap that so many companies face when looking to recruit new young talent. You can see some of the names of them behind me right here. Now, so far, we've trained faculty from 80 universities and will make the materials available to thousands of students throughout this year. And some of these universities are also represented here today. And to help graduates prepare for jobs in mobile development, we're running facilitator-led workshops through the Indonesia Android Kajar program to provide mentoring to developers across 10 cities. You know what? We can't wait to see what they do with their new skills. Perempuan di bidang IT itu adalah kaum minoritas. Jadi, saya senang untuk berbagi di sini. Saya hobi untuk mengajar. Saya hobi mengajar. Apalagi di sini ada Women Study Group yang mau belajar untuk mengenai Android atau untuk gimana cara belajar ngoding, diskusi bareng, untuk sharing bareng ilmu-ilmu kita sama-sama perempuan kita lebih nyaman. Uh, 16 tahun, aku 16 tahun. What do your friend think about this that you're doing developing? Kayak ih kok bisa sih ikut kayak gini gitu. Katanya pada masih SMA gitu. Mau di uh, lanjutkan mau bikin splash screen kemarin kita udah bikin uh, aplikasi basketball score. Why did you come? Pengen nambah pengalaman terus biar bareng-bareng sharing Android kayak gitu kan bikin pemrograman Android itu seperti apa kayak gitu. Is it hard? Uh, gampang-gampang susah. <laughs> Oh, selanjutnya bis belajar ini yang intermediate-nya nanti ke advance-nya sampai mahir dan bisa ngajarin yang lain teman-teman. Semua orang memiliki smartphone. Membuat aplikasi bukanlah hal yang sulit. Apabila kalian join bersama kami belajar bareng membuat aplikasi, kita bisa sama-sama membantu orang lain di luar sana. Indonesia Android Hijab.
it's really exciting to see the difference these programs are already starting to have. So we're excited to be working with Indonesians of different backgrounds to make the internet more relevant to them and to equip them with the skills they need to make the most of the web. So in conclusion, just let me say that we, we really believe in the Indonesian spirit of teamwork, or gotong royong. Yeah, and none of this would be possible without our valued partnerships with advertisers, publishers, and creators. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for your continued support. Now, I'd also like to thank our global product leaders who've come all the way here today to talk in greater detail about some of the specific ways we're improving our products for Indonesia. Now, we hope you have a great time with us here today at Google for Indonesia. Terima kasih dan sampai bertemu lagi. Now, I'd like to pass it to my colleague Veronica, who's going to talk about how we're helping SMBs grow their businesses by getting online. Please welcome Veronica. Thanks, Tony. Selamat siang semuanya. Apa kabar? Pertama-tama saya mau ngucapin terima kasih atas semua yang sudah bersedia meluangkan waktunya pagi ini untuk bareng-bareng sama kita. Teman-teman dari media, dari pemerintahan, dari berbagai macam sektor yang sudah menyediakan waktunya untuk bareng-bareng. Terima kasih banyak. Tony tadi sudah menceritakan tentang program Google untuk memperbaiki akses ke internet. Dan juga menyediakan tools-tools yang bisa menjadi dan mendorong Indonesia menjadi digital powerhouse di Asia Tenggara. Nah, selain melakukan pelatihan untuk gener uh, generasi baru developer dan juga startup, kita juga mau membantu UKM Indonesia untuk melakukan transisi ke ranah digital. Jadi apapun usaha Anda, mau itu membuat joglo, mau itu jualan lumpia, Google bisa membantu Anda mencari pelanggan dan juga pasar baru. Pertanyaan berikutnya yang mungkin muncul adalah, kenapa UKM? Kita tahu bahwa UKM itu menyumbangkan 60% dari GDP dan juga mempekerjakan 97% dari tenaga kerja di Indonesia. Tapi menurut Oxford Economics, kita juga tahu bahwa hanya 16% dari UKM itu yang punya website. Nah, kita ingin mengubah itu. Kenapa? Karena riset lain menunjukkan bahwa bisnis yang punya website itu lebih kredibel. Dan kita juga tahu bahwa UKM yang punya kehadiran online bisa tumbuh 80% lebih cepat dan satu setengah kali lebih mungkin untuk menambah tenaga kerjanya. Nah, karena alasan itulah edukasi menjadi penting untuk mengajarkan apa sih pentingnya go online untuk UKM dan tools apa saja yang bisa mereka gunakan untuk bisa memulai transisi mereka ke ranah digital. Itulah alasannya kenapa kita meluncurkan program Gapura Digital sejak bulan Mei kemarin. Kami ingin memberikan UKM Indonesia keterampilan baru yang bisa membantu mereka memaksimalkan potensi internet untuk mengembangkan usaha mereka. Saat ini kita menawarkan kelas di 10 kota di Indonesia, kerjasama dengan co-working spaces di 10 kota itu, dan UKM bisa datang di, week, di hari weekend untuk mempelajari berbagai macam topik. Misalnya membuat website, membangun merek lewat video, dan juga beriklan secara online. Nah, so far responnya luar biasa positif banget. Sudah 6.500 orang lebih yang terdaftar dan sudah mengikuti kelas-kelas ini. Thank you. Padahal ini baru tiga bulan pertama. So it's incredibly exciting. And it's part of our mission to empower Indonesia's micro entrepreneurs and also small businesses. Internet memang bisa memberikan dampak yang luar biasa terhadap segala jenis bisnis. Nah, saya ingin membagikan, ini salah satu cerita favorit saya tentang UKM yang sukses lewat digital. Dan dia basisnya di Bandung, kota kelahiran saya. Ide yang paling bagus itu, ide yang dijalankan. 
Nama saya Willy, berumur 34 tahun. Saya memiliki toko bernama Toserda, menjual makanan khusus pedas. Toko ini dibuka pada tahun 2010, dari 10 macam produk sampai sekarang sudah 150 produk. Saya banyak bekerja sama dengan UMKM yang ada di seluruh Indonesia. Jadi produk-produk saya itu saya dapat dari produsen UMKM seperti abon ikan cakalang itu dari Manado, sambal dari Surabaya, sambal burudi, sambal boya, di Bandung sendiri seperti sambal mertua. Saya memang dari pertama kali buka toko ini, saya udah berpikiran bakal bawa toko ini going online. Karena saya pikir kalau toko ini cuma di Bandung, cuma Bandung aja yang bisa dijangkau. Tapi ketika online, seluruh Indonesia bahkan seluruh dunia. Sekarang penjualan saya 80% online dan 20% offline. Kalau buat saya, mungkin yang paling utama jelas kalau jualan makanan itu foto harus bagus. Kemudian review produknya, deskripsi produknya, saya masukin semua ke Google My Business. Kemudian AdWords pun saya pakai. Buat tahu yang datang ke website saya itu rata-rata orangnya seperti apa, behaviornya seperti apa, gitu dari kota-kota apa saja. Saya pasang Google Analytics. Karena saya tahu banyak sekali orang-orang dari Papua, orang-orang dari Aceh yang pengen sekali beli makanan pedas dari Jawa, dari Surabaya, dari Bandung. Makanya perlu ada satu toko yang bisa mengirimkan makanan-makanan pedas kesukaan mereka ke tempat mereka. Yang hobinya sambal siapa? Pasti habis ini langsung searching tuh Toserda, bener nggak? Nggak perlu lagi kan ke Surabaya beli sambal burudi. Wiliono ini hanya salah satu contoh dari banyak sekali UKM yang sudah berhasil mengembangkan usahanya secara signifikan lewat digital. Sayangnya masih ada sebagian dari pengusaha UKM yang masih belum menggunakan internet secara maksimal. Ada yang bisa tebak nggak siapa? Enggak, enggak ada tebakan nih. Kelompok yang saya maksud di sini adalah perempuan. Nah, kita semua tahu bahwa perempuan Indonesia itu sebenarnya jiwa wira swastanya sangat tinggi. Setuju enggak? Setuju. Yang kedengeran cewek-cewek tuh. Nah, ini bukan tren hanya akhir-akhir ini aja. Sebenarnya berpuluh-puluh tahun yang lalu, kalau boleh saya cerita sedikit, almarhum Mbah Putri saya yang bahkan tidak lulus SD, itu bisa membantu suaminya untuk menyekolahkan, membantu sehari-hari dan juga menyekolahkan keenam anaknya hingga perguruan tinggi. Dan itu dia lakukan dengan menjalankan sebuah bisnis yang sangat sederhana, kalau hari ini namanya agribisnis, usaha pertanian yang sangat sederhana di desanya di Karanganyar, Jawa Tengah. Dan hingga hari ini banyak perempuan memilih untuk memulai bisnis sederhana untuk mendukung keluarganya. Baik itu dia keluar kerjaan, lalu dia milih usaha, atau mungkin kerja sambil bisnis sampingan. Banyak sekali. Hanya saja, menurut penelitian dari IFC, bisnis yang dimiliki oleh perempuan cenderung lebih kecil dari bisnis yang dijalankan oleh pria. Banyak yang tidak pernah tumbuh menjadi usaha yang lebih besar. Walaupun 51 persen dari usaha yang dimiliki oleh sorry, 51 persen dari usaha mikro itu dimiliki oleh perempuan, hanya 34 persen yang berhasil menjadi usaha ukuran menengah. Salah satu penyebabnya adalah bahwa perempuan lebih sedikit menggunakan teknologi untuk bisnisnya. Bahkan menurut penelitian yang sama tadi, 47 persen perempuan tidak menggunakan teknologi untuk bisnisnya. Program Google Women Will ingin menghilangkan kesenjangan gender di sektor ini. Dan kami melakukan itu dengan cara mendampingi komunitas pengusaha perempuan dan mendorong mereka untuk berbagi pengalaman, berbagi pengetahuan untuk gimana sih caranya menggunakan teknologi untuk mengembangkan bisnis. Nah, konferensi Women Will sudah kami lakukan tahun ini di lima kota. Dan kita sudah mengumpulkan 7.000 pengusaha perempuan across Jakarta, Bandung, Surabaya, Semarang, dan Denpasar. Lewat program ini saya berkenalan dengan banyak sekali pengusaha perempuan yang luar biasa hebat. Salah satunya adalah Ibu Ana Avanti, yang kita semua tahu kebayanya sudah tersohor di seluruh dunia. Dan juga Ibu Ida Widya Stuti. Beliau ini berawal dari seorang pengusaha penjual emping di Pasar Sidoarjo. 
Dan sekarang dia eksportir keripik pisang ke seluruh dunia. Luar biasa. Dan itu semua pakai teknologi. Nah, kisah-kisah seperti ini itu menunjukkan bahwa kita semua tuh harus menggabungkan kekuatan. Dan kita harus terus meneruskan momentum ini dan menciptakan lebih banyak lagi peluang bagi pengusaha perempuan untuk berhasil dan mengembangkan bisnisnya. Women Will dan Gapura adalah dua program yang sudah mulai kita jalankan dan bisa diikuti oleh siapapun on the ground. Nah, untuk melengkapi hands-on training ini, kita juga punya berbagai platform uh, dan tools online untuk UKM. Tahun 2015, kita sudah luncurkan Google Business School. Dan dalam satu tahun terakhir, sudah lebih dari 700 ribu UKM di Indonesia menggunakannya untuk membuat kehadiran mereka lebih mudah ditemukan di Google Search dan juga Google Maps. What's new? Tadi di awal sudah saya sebutkan bahwa pembuatan website itu jadi salah satu tantangan paling besar untuk UKM, untuk go online. Padahal kita tahu dari listing yang terdaftar di Google Businessku selama ini, listing yang memiliki, web, memiliki website itu punya kemungkinan 25% sampai 35% lebih tinggi untuk diklik. Karena itu tahun ini kita meluncurkan website gratis dari Google Businessku. Dengan ini semua pengusaha yang sudah punya profil Google Businessku sekarang bisa menciptakan website gratis yang mobile optimized juga untuk bisnisnya dan waktunya cukup 10 menit saja. Jadi langsung mengambil data yang sudah ada dan itu langsung jadi website. Kita luncurkan ini bulan Mei dan sekarang sudah 120 ribu UKM menggunakan jasa ini untuk websitenya mereka. Sangat mudah dan sangat memudahkan. Tapi kita nggak mau berhenti di situ. Hari ini sangat istimewa buat kami, karena kita akhirnya meluncurkan aplikasi edukasi untuk pengusaha UKM yang kami sebut Primer. Primer adalah aplikasi gratis yang bisa digunakan oleh siapapun untuk belajar tentang berbagai macam skill digital yang mereka gunakan untuk meraih lebih banyak customer online dan juga mengembangkan usahanya. Di awal peluncuran ini akan ada 24 topik dan semuanya dalam bahasa Indonesia. Dan kontennya seperti bagaimana membangun sebuah bisnis, bagaimana menjual produk dan jasa online, dan juga tentunya pentingnya digital marketing dan cara melakukannya. Primer ini menarik karena setiap topik kita buat sesimpel mungkin, sehingga hanya butuh waktu lima menit saja untuk mempelajari satu topik. Jadi saat Anda berada di KRL, ada di komuter lain, lagi di belakang gokar, nunggu macet, Anda bisa ubah waktu yang idle itu menjadi lebih produktif dengan mempelajari sesuatu yang baru untuk membangun bisnis Anda. Dan ini kita bisa lakukan tanpa koneksi internet, tanpa data, offline. Jadi benar-benar um, affordable and accessible. Dan kita akan terus menambahkan lesson-lessonnya, this is only the start, Hari ini Primer sudah bisa di-download both di Google Play Store dan juga di Apple, uh, App, App Store. Um, jadi buat yang sudah punya ide bisnis sampingan, siapa yang sudah punya ide bisnis sampingan? Orang Indonesia tuh selalu punya ide bisnis sampingan. Bisa langsung di-install dan dipakai untuk segera mengembangkan usahanya. Pelatihan digital tapi harus go beyond bisnis dan developer. So finally, I'm also pleased to share that Google.org, our philanthropic arm, memberikan sebuah grant kepada ICT Watch untuk Smart Schools Online Project mereka. ICT Watch ini adalah sebuah non-profit organization yang mempromosikan hak asasi manusia dan kebebasan berpendapat melalui internet. ICT Watch akan bekerjasama dengan ECPAT dan juga Yayasan Sejiwa untuk menjalankan proyek ini. Dan dana yang, digunakan, dana yang didapatkan akan digunakan untuk melatih 35 ribu murid, guru, dan orang tua tentang digital literacy dan juga keamanan online. So these are exciting times, and we at Google are incredibly proud and excited to be part of this important transition. Tapi ini harus terus menjadi usaha kita bersama. Dan karena itu, kami mau berterima kasih kepada semua partner kita yang sudah bekerja sama 
di bidang teknologi, telekomunikasi, media, dan berbagai macam sektor lainnya. Hanya dengan bantuan Anda, kita bisa terus membangun dan memajukan ekosistem digital di Indonesia. Terima kasih banyak. And now I'll hand it over to Ken Tokuse from the search team who's going to talk about how we're making it easier for Indonesians to find information on the internet. Thank you. Selamat pagi. All right. I'm Ken, Ken Tokuse. Uh, I work on Google search for next billion users. Thank you for taking the time to come here today. Now, this is the fourth time I've been to Indonesia, and the more I get to know about the country, I continue to be impressed by the vastness and diversity this country represents. Every visit is a reminder for me on how much more Google should contribute to people in this country, and I'm excited to be taking a part on that today as well. Now, as some of you may know, Google's mission is to organize the world information and make it universally accessible and useful. Traveling across the world and in Indonesia, I'm truly energized by seeing many of the positive trends that I know will help make this mission a reality for billions of users around the world, and not just a select few. Um, as we're going to see, there are many, many factors at play on this trend here, but uh, the most important, I think, is how access to information is growing at unprecedented speed. Tony earlier talked about how it's happening in Indonesia, but estimates say around the world there will be over 6 billion smartphone subscriptions in the world uh, in five years. So this means that people have ability to access the internet on devices that fits in the palm of your hand, uh, but in some cases, and some of you might actually have them around the wrist too. Yeah, and again, Indonesia is obviously uh, among the top countries that are at the forefront of this phenomenon. When we look at the search users, search users in Indonesia is growing 50% faster than global average. And Indonesians are looking for a variety of topics from health to finance to entertainment and sports. And it's constantly changing as people's interest changes over time. So, I just did with the last few months alone, we are seeing new trends emerging from a variety of topics like um, how to say greetings in Javanese for Ramadan, how to pay electricity bills online, and meaning of popular uh, lyrics, Despacito, the movie. I'm glad you got chuckle out of that. I enjoyed that myself. Uh, now, so this is really a representation of how Indonesia is looking for not just practical topics, but Hot topics, stay on top of hot topics and uh, a very important cultural moments. So as Google, how do we keep up with this? How do we keep making search more useful, more helpful uh, to Indonesians? Today, I'd like to share with you three of my favorite examples uh, to illustrate this. The first one is what we did for Ramadan earlier in this year. Uh, before we talk about it, let's just roll the video to see how it uh, worked out. Ramadan itu adalah bangun pagi buat sahur, ngaji, sholat, tidur tiduran, nonton YouTube, taraweh, sama ngabuburit. Keluar cepet, tapi Jakarta kayaknya macetnya gila mas. Cuma ketik Ramadan aja. Ini di Google ya. Oh ada kalender Ramadan, seminggu lagi lebaran nih mas. <laughs> ada berita Ramadannya ya. Bisa buat baca-baca nih. Buat ya cari-cari menu baru ya kan? Nih gue ada kartu lebaran. Share dong gue. Nih gue share ya. Thank you for watching. So just to summarize, just by clicking Ramadan, the Google shows you a sunset, sunrise times. Uh, f uh, choose from a variety of recipes relevant to Ramadan, uh, find a nice greeting to share with you and, and your family and your friends, and also stay on top of the news. The idea is that we wanted to be there for your important cultural moments by answering top questions that Indonesians are asking about to make our daily celebration more and more meaningful. 
Now, number two, the another major effort we have been spending is around health. When it comes to questions about your well-being, or more importantly, well-being of your loved ones, access to accurate and up-to-date answers is absolutely critical. For this end, I'm really excited to announce that we've partnered with Mitra Kudarga group of hospitals to launch in the coming months over 700 health answers for Indonesian in search. Thank you. <clears throat> and these answers uh, detail symptoms and treatments for most prevalent conditions in Indonesia, and they are carefully reviewed by doctors in Indonesia that you trust. The third example I want to highlight is about enabling Indonesians to create great content and contribute directly to Google search. We call this feature Posts on Google. So today, if you, uh, for instance, if you search for musician Ayu Tintin, you can actually see her latest videos and updates that, uh, on the, straight on Google search as she posts them and update them. Now, Indonesia is actually the first country in Asia we are opening up for a variety of categories across entertainment and sports and uh, culture. For more information, please check out the webpage posts.google.com. Now, not only are we working to provide more and more relevant content for Indonesians, we are developing ways to make it work faster for you. Last year, we touched on a capability in search that streamlines the web search result page and websites that you click through so that it loads faster and uses less data when we detect 2G-like data connections automatically. And today, we're bringing this capability, the same technology, to image search. Uh, so that images load up up to 30% faster. Now, we know this is extremely relevant for Indonesians in particular because we see that Indonesians engage with image search 25% more than users in the US. So I hope you get to enjoy them, uh, no matter what the network condition might be. Now, to show you some of the other innovations we are working to make the information access faster and easier, I'd like to bring my colleague Mira up to stage to show you two new features coming to Google App uh, very soon. How are you doing, Mira? Thank you for joining. I'm good. Thanks, Ken. All right. Excellent. So up until now, you have to type something or say something to Google to get the information we need, you need. But uh, lately, we've been exploring other ways to get there. Shortcuts in search is a new feature coming through the Google app, is a new way to interact with Google in the simplest way possible, just by tapping. So Mira, how about showing our guests how this works on your phone? Of course, be my guest. But let me switch to Bahasa Indonesia so I can show our audience here how it works. All right. OK. Sekarang nih, kalau misalnya saya buka Google app ya, nah teman-teman bisa lihat kan di sini langsung ada icon-icon kecil nih di bawah kotak pencarian Google, mulai dari berbagai topik. Ini tuh yang tadi si Ken bilang, namanya shortcuts. Shortcuts ini tuh apa sih sebenarnya dan kenapa Google ngembangin shortcuts? Shortcuts ini sebenarnya adalah cara mudah untuk mengakses informasi di Google tanpa perlu ngetik atau pakai perintah suara. Tinggal tap aja. Nah, pas banget kan untuk orang Indonesia. Riset kita bilang orang Indonesia memang sukanya yang praktis-praktis aja, maunya cepat akses informasi sama konten. Jadi tuh ada banyak banget mulai dari shortcut cafe, bar, um, nyari SPBU, supermarket, semua dengan satu tap gampang untuk akses informasi. Um, dan tentunya shortcut yang kayaknya penting untuk orang Indonesia pasti tempat makan. Siapa sih nggak suka makan? Kita ajak Ken makan ya malam ini. Ken, do you want to try some Indonesian food tonight? Sounds great. Why don't you suggest me something? Sure. Coba ya, saya membuka shortcut tempat makan. Kita lihat nih ada option apa aja. Uh, saya bisa langsung nyari dengan restoran-restoran yang dekat saya. Ini semua kayak di mall. Jangan ajak Ken ke mall deh. Bosen. Uh, bisa juga nyari berdasarkan tipe makanan. Atau saya juga bisa lihat restoran-restoran yang pernah saya kunjungin langsung di history di sini. Coba ya kita pilih, Ken kita bawa ke mana ya? Ah, Namas. Saya pernah ke Namas dan ini enak banget. Ken, we should go to Namas. It's really good. It's not that far. I just hope the traffic won't be too bad though. Ah, traffic. <laughs> I've been here often enough to know how important traffic is in making any plans, including today. <laughs> so. Well, definitely. Well, luckily, obviously, Google knows traffic, and it can give us like real-time estimation on how to get somewhere. So now, with the new shortcut of directions to home, or in Bahasa, arah ke rumah, um, I can easily, in one tap, 
knows um, how long it would take for me to get home. Let's take a look. Oh, it takes around half an hour. Hmm, I think I'm better off staying here, I guess. Please do. <laughs> I still need you here. And there are more updates coming along, exciting updates coming later today. Thank you. Now, another way to help a uh, user get the information faster and easier is through the new feature called the feed. The idea is that we wanted to help you stay in the know about things you care about, even when you're not searching. Now, the feed does just that. It's a stream of updates on the Google app uh, that keeps you in the know throughout the day to help you discover useful information that's specific to you, uh, to your needs. Uh, so the more you use Google Feed, the, more, the better it gets to understanding what you care about. So Mira, would you mind showing us your feed so we'll see how this feature works? Ken, you're putting me on the spot here. Um, I'll, I'll be able to show the audience basically all my interests and the things I've been searching for. Right. But OK, let's take a look. Yang Ken bilang tadi, Google Feed ini muncul langsung dari Google App. Teman-teman uh, bisa lihat langsung di sini artikel pertama yang muncul adalah tentang zodiak. Saya Aquarius dan suka banget nyari tentang horoskop tiap hari. Jadi Google tahu itu, jadi artikel-artikel ini munculin juga berhubungan dengan um, interest saya dan history search saya. Coba kita lihat nih, ramalan zodiak hari ini, Aquarius. Pekerjaan Anda tidak beres. Ya. Yeah. <laughs> saya nggak mau percaya yang ini deh, nggak, ini kayaknya nggak bagus nih. Dada, skip, skip, skip. Oke. Okay. Selain itu juga, Google tahu lokasi saya. Jadi berita-berita lokal yang lagi trending di Jakarta atau di Indonesia juga langsung dimunculin. Yang pastinya biar saya nggak ketinggalan uh, berita juga kan. Um, selain itu, feed ini juga bisa langsung di customize sesuai dengan topik-topik yang kita suka. That's it, Ken. That was my feed. All right. Thank you for sharing your interest and uh, thanks for the help today. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mira. All right. <laughs> so we are really excited about the feed and the shortcuts for Indonesia. As I mentioned earlier, these features come into Google App in, our, in the coming weeks. Now, the technology that underpins much of the technology, certainly like the feed uh, and the voice search we talked about earlier, or the photo search, uh, is machine learning. Machine learning is all about teaching computers to learn how to make better and better decisions without humans having to program all kinds of rules in advance. And this is propelling Google's technology at an unprecedented rate. One example of this evolution is Google Assistant. With Google Assistant, you can have a conversation with Google to get things done, like ordering something online, uh, setting up a reminder for yourself, or booking a table at the restaurant. And today, I'm excited to announce that Google Assistant is available in Bahasa, Indonesia. Right. Yes. All right. You guys are awesome. You're just making my job very easy. Thank you. Uh, now, think of Google Assistant as a personalized Google that speaks your language, uh, that's available to whenever you need help, uh, at home, at work, on the go, or wherever in between. Now, it's still early days, but one of the first places Google Assistant will be available is in Google Allo, our smart messaging app. With that, I'd like to pass the baton to my colleague Adam to talk all about Google Allo coming to Indonesia. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ken. Selamat pagi. My name is Adam, and I work on Google's communication products. Communication is a hugely important aspect of our lives especially here, where Indonesians spend more time on social communication than anything else on their mobile phone. I bet half of you are chatting with someone right now as I talk to you. So it's no surprise that this is one of the most hyper-social countries in the world. Living in Singapore, I've spent a lot of time in Indonesia over the past few years, and one thing that's really impressed me is how social connections are such a core value here. I still chat with friends from Aceh or Bandung or Jakarta that I met years ago. So I'm really excited to be here today to tell you about how we're bringing Google technology to communication. Specifically today, I'm going to talk about two communication apps, Google Allo and Google Duo, and some new features that we're launching that we think users here will love. Let's start with Allo. Allo is our smart messaging app, which uses machine learning to help you say more and do more in chat. And as you just heard from Ken, Allo is the first place where the Google Assistant speaks Bahasa Indonesia. 
you'll get to meet your Indonesian Google Assistant right here on stage. My Indonesian is a little bit rusty, so Sasha is going to join me on stage soon to show us how we can get stuff done when in a chat with friends. But first, I want to show you a couple new features we're launching to let you say more in Allo. If there's one thing I've learned from my colleagues here in Indonesia, it's that saying more means using a lot of stickers. <laughs> so to help you just say more and say exactly what they mean in a visual way, we collaborated with artists and creators to make Allo stickers based on Indonesian pop culture, traditions, and important moments. We recently released Ramadan stickers to celebrate the holiest month of the year for Muslims in Indonesia. And today, we're launching six new sticker packs showcasing popular topics like football, school, and even a couple ghosts. We also wanted to make stickers more personal. As we all know, selfies are popular globally, and Indonesia is no exception. People in Yogyakarta take so many selfies, it's one of the top 50 selfiest cities in the world. <laughs> so for them, we made selfie stickers, which uses computer vision technology to translate your selfie into an artistic rendering of you. Here, we partnered with local YouTube star Reza and had him create his own selfie stickers. Pretty good, right? I personally find it a lot more fun to send a sticker that looks like me. Take a look at mine. What do you think? Pretty close. With all these stickers, wouldn't it be nice if there was an easy way to find the ideal sticker or the perfect GIF at the right time? You may have guessed, Allo can help with that. I want to invite my friend Sasha up to help us out with the demo. Hello. Hey, Sasha. Hi. Apa kabar semua ya? Baik. Enjoy ya. <laughs> All right. You gonna help us out? Let's see. See if we can see your group chat. Sure. Uh, so, looks like you guys are making a plan for something. Yeah, we're taking out to dinner. Oh, fantastic. Yep. Um, is there a specific sticker that you're looking for? Yeah, I'm trying to look uh, for the sticker with a high five hands, or what we call in Indonesia, toss. So toss sticker should be somewhere here. Ah, right? you found it. Great. But we wanted to take a smarter approach with Allo. With machine learning, we understand the context of your conversation and can suggest relevant emojis, GIFs, and local stickers to make your Allo chats more fun. Our team of linguists and engineers have re re worked really hard, and starting today, this feature also works in Bahasa Indonesia. So, Sasha, let's give that one more try, this time with Smart Smiley. Sure. Dengan fitur Smart Smiley, sekarang kita bisa cari stiker lebih cepat. Sekarang kan saya mau cari stiker dengan gambar tos. Caranya adalah saya klik icon Smart Smiley di sini, Lalu ketik toss dan kita mau found it. Ah, so much faster. <laughs> so you just saw how Allo is smart in helping you be more expressive and visual in your daily conversations. But Allo can also help you do more, like making dinner plans, looking up news, by including the Google Assistant directly in your chats with friends. So let's bring the Google Assistant right into your group chat to get the help that you need. How is that dinner plan coming along? Uh, it's going well. Is there anything you want to eat, Adam? Uh, as long as they have nasi goreng, I'm happy. Nasi goreng. Hmm. OK, let me find a restaurant. Jadi, asisten Google bisa ngasih informasi ketika kita butuhin. Sekarang saya mau nyari restoran yang ada nasi goreng buat ajak Adam dinner. Coba tanya asisten Google ya. Caranya adalah tinggal ketik at Google restoran Indonesia dekat sini. Oke, okay, asistennya lagi sibuk nyari nih. Kira-kira rekomendasinya apa ya? Ya. Ya. <laughs> ada ada beberapa restoran. Uh, Adam suka yang mana ya? Oke, okay, kayaknya ini enak dan pasti ada nasi goreng. Lalu saya klik aja restoran yang saya mau, dan asisten Google akan bawa beberapa informasi atau detail lebih lanjut mengenai restoran itu. Oh, this one is open tonight. Oh, fantastic. It looks like Aru likes it too. I'm excited. I'm going to be pretty hungry after this is done. Uh, so the Google Assistant can also pull up information based on your group's interests. You have an example for us for that? Sure. 
So I don't want to miss any news about my favorite singer. Let me see what's the latest. Aku sekarang pengen coba cari berita Afgan. Nah, dengan selain ketik at Google, sebenarnya ada cara lebih cepat lainnya, yaitu aku tunjukin sekarang ya. Kita bisa klik icon asisten Google ya di sini, lalu ketik berita Afgan. Afgan apa ya update-nya ya? Yeah. Great, and you can actually also subscribe to updates by clicking the bubble down below. Wow, so you just subscribed your entire group to daily updates from your favorite singer. Yeah, so we, we can get updates about <laughs> Afghan every day. I'm sure my friends will like it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, is there anything else close to your heart, Sasha? Uh, yeah, uh, I have a lot of interests. Uh, when talking about interests, it's hard to leave out sports. How many of you guys here love football? Football, anyone? All right. Uh, and I see that Aru is no exception either. But you can see that the Google Assistant actually brought up the schedule right in your group chat, so you can continue the conversation without missing a beat. Yeah, we just made a plan for this weekend. It's all in the group chat without leaving Allo. Fantastic. So now you've seen how the Assistant can be helpful in your conversation, but how about you show us something fun? Sure. Uh, since we talk about football, I'm sure you all probably wonder if the Assistant has any favorite sports. Um, coba saya tanya ya, at Google, apa olahraga favorit kamu? Oh, dia nggak bisa main olahraga sih, tapi dia katanya suka ngikutin beritanya. Dan lucu juga ya, ternyata asisten Google tahu banyak tentang Indonesia, jadi kayaknya akan menarik banget kalau kita bisa ngobrol-ngobrol sama asisten Google. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So the assistant <laughs> understood the context of your of your conversation and provided a unique response. Uh, and because the assistant is well versed in news, we even even get an interesting fact too. But not only facts, the assistant can also tell jokes. Yes, and maybe funnier than me. So, <laughs> so we tried restaurants, we've tried football, we tried Afghan. Kita coba tebak-tebakan SD kali ya. <laughs> All right, let me ask at Google, tebak, tebakan. <laughs> Lucu juga. <laughs> hey Adam, it's really funny, they're all laughing. <laughs> We can do more jokes outside, <laughs> or on your phone. <laughs> what do you think? Pretty nice, right? <laughs> I... <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> I've literally spent hours asking the assistant random stuff, but it's also incredibly useful in everyday chats with friends. Uh, all right, thank you, Sasha. That was really great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Google Assistant. <laughs> so that's Google Allo, a smart messaging app that helps you say more and do more in chat. We're really excited for you to try it and let us know what you think. Staying in touch with the people you care about is so important, be it through video, voice, or messaging. Now I'd like to talk to you about Duo, a simple, high-quality video calling app that allows you to be together in the moment with the people you're closest to. We designed Duo first and foremost to be easy to use. With just one tap, you can start a call with anybody. You don't even need to set up an account. All you need is a phone number. Secondly, Duo is reliable. A recent technical study found Duo to be the number one app in video call quality across 3G, Wi-Fi, and LTE connections. Duo proactively monitors network quality multiple times per second, allowing it to degrade gracefully when bandwidth is limited or seamlessly switch between Wi-Fi and cellular. But finally, we want Duo to be spontaneous. That's why we built Knock Knock, which allows you to see a live video preview of the caller before you even pick up. This makes unplanned calls feel like more of an invitation than an interruption, my daughter uses Knock Knock all the time because she knows making funny faces is going to get me to pick up the phone. 
Duo works for everyone everywhere. It's simple, fast, and reliable for video calls, and will come pre-installed on all new Android phones. We also make it easy to switch between chat and video to simply tap on the Duo icon inside your Allo chat. We do what we do to help you stay connected, whether it's by finding your point with the perfect sticker, find the right cafe in a group chat, or just making funny faces to get your friend to pick up a video call. Nearly 100 million Indonesians will have come online over the next few years, and their evolving communication needs will dramatically change the messaging landscape from where we see it today. That's why we're so excited to be part of this evolution by bringing Google technology to communication. Starting with helping you get things done with the Google Assistant and making your chats easier, more expressive, and fun. Now, I'd like to hand it off to my friend Diane to talk about how we're helping Indonesians navigate through traffic every day. Thank you. Hello, I'm Diane. I started the US Office of Waze in 2009 and launched in Indonesia right here in 2013. For anyone who doesn't know, Waze is a real-time navigation and traffic application on a mission to save everybody time every day, at least five minutes when you would otherwise be stuck in traffic. We all know that Indonesians spend a lot of time on the road, and that's why we're here. We want to make sure that we're able to be here on the ground to make sure that we can help solve mobility problems and improve traffic conditions here. Today, I want to share three things. Number one, I want to share the work that we've done here that has set a global standard for the way that corporations, governments, and citizens work together to solve mobility problems. The results have been impressive. Number two, I have two big announcements about what's next for Waze in Indonesia. And number three, I want to give a huge thank you to our community of map editors, without whom none of this would be possible. They're the ones who keep us close to the ground and keep pushing us to do more locally. But before we get to all of that, why Indonesia? A rich and layered history of exploration, trade, and diversity has made Indonesia one of the most important countries for innovation and for export of knowledge across the globe. We like to say internally that all roads start in Indonesia and then expand out. And it's true, many of our firsts have been right here. For example, our smart city pilots that started here are now being rolled out across the world. The first city to be one of our connected citizens partners in Asia, Jakarta. The first country where we ever worked with mobile operators, Indonesia. And Indonesia is also the country that has the most broadcast and radio partners anywhere else in Asia. For example, Net TV, CNN Indonesia, iNews, Bharati Satu, uh, El Shinta, on and on, Jack and Jen FM. This means that we're able to provide the best real-time traffic to Indonesians across multiple channels. We also have a huge community of Wazers here. We have more than 2 million drivers in Jakarta alone. Indonesia is our second biggest market in all of Asia, and it's number six out of 185 markets where we currently operate. Very, very important market for us. We also feel needed. Indonesia is home to some of the most vibrant cities in Asia, but that vibrancy comes at a cost. That cost is massive traffic congestion. In the greater Jakarta area, there are more than 25 million trips per day. 25 million. It's incredible. And the average Jakarta driver has 33,000 stops and starts in traffic in a given year. That's more than anywhere else in the world. <laughs> That's a lot of time to bond with Waze, so we feel an obligation to do something here. It's a problem we're working on solving together, though, and we're pretty happy about the early results. In 2014, we launched something called the Connected Citizens Program. This is a data exchange platform that allows us to collect road closures, incidents, crowdsourced traffic patterns, and share that with cities so that they can use that information to solve the worst traffic problems. 
Jakarta was the first city in Asia to be part of that program. And actually, they were so early that they were part of our very first 10 cities. This program today is now 450 cities and departments of transportation around the world. And the Jakarta Smart City Unit is using this information to identify the worst pain points for mobility and to evaluate the information about what works and what doesn't work. So, for example, the odd even license plate restrictions. Let's look at some results. This is traffic in Jakarta in the first half of last year. It's pretty intense. And if you can imagine, in May of last year, it got even worse when they ended the three-in-one uh, three traffic policy. The three-in-one traffic policy increased traffic on those three-in-one roads by 101%, and on alternate roads by 31%. But there was an important positive social outcome to removing this policy. Child exploitation was decreased, and there was no more room for jockeys who got paid just to sit in a car to avoid penalties for the policy. So what did the Smart City team do, the Jakarta Smart City unit? They piloted a program around odd, even license plate restrictions, and the results were incredible. 19% decrease in travel time during the pilot. They could figure that out because they were using our data. They could figure out in record speed that it was working and roll it out for the long term. This is really phenomenal. In addition to rolling out this policy in the rest of Jakarta, they shared this case study with the rest of those Connected Citizens partners, and it's now being rolled out across the world. Thank you, Jakarta. Let's look at some local examples, things we're trying to do to make it feel that we are um, a bit more connected here on the specific roads. This brings me to announcement number one. We know that this program, this policy is working. At the same time, the community came to us and they said, it's not going well because we can't figure out a way to navigate. We don't know which day of the week we should be using which route. So thanks to the community, I am very happy to announce that we will be the first app to allow you to navigate based on your license plate numbers. We call it license plate routing, and Indonesians just have to add the last two digits of their license plate number and immediately be given the route for that day of the week. We hope it's going to save you a tremendous amount of time and stress on the road. Okay, so that's announcement number one. A couple more small things. One, Mudik. We know that this is a very difficult traffic season for all of you. And so what we did was we analyzed historical data to figure out what were going to be the best and worst times to leave so that you could get home faster. This was used by 14 million Indonesians this year. But it's still a lot of time spent in the car. So we partnered with Spotify to create a custom curated playlist just for Mudik, just for Indonesia, so that you could have a little fun on the road. In 2015, we launched our first Bahasa Indonesia Voices. And these voices were Septi and Alva, two real-life map editors who thought we needed local voices. Today, Septi and Alva are navigating 2.5 million Indonesians. They've chosen their voices as guides. That brings me to announcement number two for the day, and I'm very excited about this one. Today, you will have available to you our very first Indonesia voice suite. This includes a new voice, Dion, nothing to do with me. I can dream. Dion is much smarter than the previous voices. She has better text-to-speech, and she has street names, a lot more information than we currently had. And that's not the only thing we're launching today. In addition to Dion's voice, we have Bahasa voice commands. So you will simply tell Waze, go home, report traffic, and you don't have to touch your phone. So hands safe is not all. There's another key element to this Indonesian voice suite, and 
It's you. As a result to record your own voice, any dialect, any language, any style. <laughs> You're the new voice of Waze, and you can share it. You can share it with your friends, family, and if you're a celebrity, you can share it with your fans. So I can't wait to see who's going to be guiding me around Jakarta next time I'm here. This is available today. It launched this morning, so feel free to play with it. There's also an experience zone out there where you can go a lot deeper and get the, the in-depth demo, so I hope you check it out. It's pretty fun out there. Lastly, as mentioned, I want to thank our community of Wazers. They are constantly challenging us to do more and let us know what's going on. Really, without them, we couldn't, we couldn't do any of this. They're the heart of everything we do. I also want to thank our Wazers and our partners, because it's inspiring to be working side by side with them as modern day explorers and teachers for the rest of the world. We're committed to Indonesia, we're committed to solving and fixing and improving mobility here, and we're just really excited to be a part of it all. If you don't already use Waze, please feel free to download it, it's free, uh, and you'll be helping your neighbors, your colleagues avoid traffic, and you'll be keeping Indonesia a Waze pioneer. Ayo Indonesia! <laughs> With that, I'd like to invite Zubair onto the stage to talk about YouTube's momentum in Indonesia. Hi everyone, I'm Zubair and I lead YouTube marketing for our next billion users. I'm really excited to be here today. Um, I want to talk to you about all the work that we at YouTube are doing to improve the YouTube experience for users here in Indonesia. I live in Singapore and I've been lucky enough to visit Indonesia very often. And every time I come here, I'm just so inspired by everything I see around me. From the beauty of Bali to the energy here in Jakarta, and all the warm and hospitable people that I meet every time I'm here. In fact, just this week, I loved meeting some truly creative entrepreneurs, uh, like Jansen from Kibar and Aldi from Ruma, and, and just hearing their ideas and optimism, it's just so inspiring. And so I strongly believe that these are very exciting times for Indonesia, and Indonesia is critical to YouTube's success. Indonesia is such a diverse country, it has a rich cultural legacy and a tradition of music, dance, storytelling, and entertainment. And such a diverse country that, that loves music, that loves storytelling, that loves entertainment, that is a perfect match for YouTube. Our goal at YouTube is to bring this cultural vibrancy to the rest of Indonesia and to the rest of the world, which is 1.5 billion users that come back to YouTube every month in search of great content. We are at the start of a golden age of creativity in Indonesia, and this is sparked by your local online pioneers. The number of Indonesian channels on YouTube that have more than one million subscribers has increased by more than 4x, four times over the past year. That's a huge, 4x increase. And this is reflecting the incredible momentum of Indonesia's creative industry and all the people who want to come online. Overall, the, the number of hours of content that's been uploaded to YouTube from Indonesia has more than tripled over the last year, 3x. And Indonesians are loving this content. We see some amazing numbers on the user side as well. Last year, mobile watch time in Indonesia grew by 155%. 
And now, more than 50 million Indonesians are coming back to YouTube every month. Those are big numbers, big numbers. Thank you. Now, with such amazing momentum, we want to make sure that we are empowering the next generation of Indonesian entertainers to help them tell their stories and to reach their audiences and grow their audiences. This includes creators like Gen Halilintar. I guess they're in the house there. <laughs> So it's a, very interesting. The family of 13, they travel all around the world, and they've gathered one million fans and subscribers along the way. And then there's Ria Riches, a vlogger, and Indonesia's first female creator to cross the one million subscriber mark. I think that's really good. This also includes creators like Cameo Project. They're a group of four friends. And they are actually ambassadors of YouTube's Creator for Change program, one of only 11 ambassadors globally. Um, Cameo Project, they create thought-provoking, inspiring videos all about social issues that the Indonesian youth are facing today. Very inspiring. And it's not just that. We are starting to see a lot more creators put content and videos on YouTube outside of Jakarta, so from smaller cities all around the country, and they are starting to find a national audience. This year, we saw our first YouTube creator from outside of Jakarta cross the one million subscriber mark, and that's Bayu Skak, a hilarious comedian from Malang. And of course, our partners also include established media houses like NetMedia, Compass, and Multivision Plus. On YouTube today, you can watch full episodes of NetMedia's hit shows like Ini Talk Show and the sitcom OK Jack. In fact, just a few hours ago, NetMedia became the first media house in Indonesia to cross the one million subscriber mark. That's amazing, just a, just a few hours ago. So that's hot off the press. Other media partners obviously are continuing to grow their presence on YouTube. Compass is even broadcasting their daily newscasts live to nationwide audiences, no matter what screen they're on, what device they use. And you can even watch full episodes of Multivision's hit shows, like Nadine and Kachir Jadi Manten. And I think you, are, you already know this, Your Indonesia's president, Joko Widodo, has been an active vlogger, sharing his candid behind-the-scenes moments with other heads of state, like Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, and the Saudi King Salman. It's amazing. Now, with such a wide range of interests and content categories, YouTube has something for every Indonesian. However, we know that the YouTube experience can still be made better. We believe that YouTube should be able to amplify the voices of all of what, so what kind of device they own. It does not matter. YouTube should work for everybody. I've seen firsthand how frustrating it can be for videos to keep buffering on and on incessantly. I've seen how data quotas can just be eaten up before you know it. Um, and recognizing these kind of issues, we rolled out YouTube offline. This was our first major step to help address some of these challenges that users are facing here in Indonesia. YouTube offline allows you to save videos on your device, so that, and you can do that when you have access to Wi-Fi or good data connections. And then you can watch and re-watch them again and again without worrying about your data quota. And because of this work, we've seen huge adoption of the offline feature here in Indonesia. But we know that it's not just the speed of data that's an issue. Cost of data can also be a barrier in, in giving a really good experience to users. This is why we are working with our local telco partners to provide affordable video data plans. This is an example of one of our initiatives with Excel, which was very successful. I'm sure you've especially folks from here in Jakarta, I'm sure you would have seen this or hopefully attended it. Um, and, and so all these efforts help people to watch YouTube without worrying about their data quota. Now, these kind of steps and efforts, it's done a lot to improve the YouTube experience in big cities, where people have better phones, they have faster networks, other big urban centers. We want YouTube to work equally well for all of them as well. I want to tell you a story of the impact that YouTube can have when it works well outside of big cities. This is Awan. He is an entrepreneur from Lamongan, East Java, and he uses YouTube to build his business. Awan is very passionate about Indonesia's traditional music, particularly the gamelan. He teaches people how to play the gamelan, and actually with a very creative twist. 
He and his small group use YouTube to promote his gamelan tutorial business, as well as spreading gamelan music around the world. He actually covered the hit song Closer by Chainsmokers in a very creative way. I'd like to show you a short video about it. Hey, nelengom ben mulai sekolahku Barang awak mutuku lagen Iki wes rasehat Kadang gremeng dewe saking ragu hati Yo wes nyoba Nyoba gole irono rene rana moke wah how good was that? How good was that? <laughs> He's amazing. And another fun anecdote. The name of his channel is called Gamelawan. I find that so creative. Amazing confluence of both the names. His Gamelawan channel now has more than 120,000 subscribers and growing. And he has a thriving Gamelan, business, Gamelan school in Lamongan. Very inspiring. And Awan's story is not unique. We hear of many such people who kick off their own journeys, their own businesses of, of selling a line of beauty products or fashion or even music labels. And we want to bring the power of YouTube to all of these entrepreneurs. And not just all across Indonesia, so that they can also reach audiences across the world. And we can make YouTube as helpful as it needs to be for them. And because stories like these are so important, and we know it's still hard to watch YouTube on poor networks or on low bandwidth. I'm proud to announce that we have built a brand new app that will make YouTube accessible for everyone. We call it YouTube Go. Thank you. We've already released the app in beta in India. We're testing it in Nigeria. And Indonesia is the third country in the world where we are already actively testing the app. I'd like to show you a video which captures some of the user feedback that we received as we were building the app. Tutorial gitar. Otomotif. Tutorial makeup. Dia mau masak. Tutorial video Upin Ipin. Pernah sih dulu bermasalah dengan nonton-nonton video online karena biasanya bufferingnya ya lama sama loading. Ya loadingnya lah lama. Kalau saya sendiri di download, soalnya di save offline gitu. Tahu kan pemakaian itu, terus tiba-tiba terputus. Itu udah kesel banget, tapi sempat pasti banget. Ya, tapi sih berharap berpanya ada, gitu aja sih. Kalau misalkan buffering sama kuotanya nggak habis, ya itu menguntungkan sekali buat pengguna YouTube sih. Seneng, Seneng banget. banget. Pertama ya aksesnya mudah, kualitas videonya juga nggak rendah. Ya biasa kalau misalkan mungkin kalau YouTube di gua ini lebih lebih mengambil KB-nya dikit dibandingkan itu biasa. Iya menurut saya juga asik banget soalnya HP saya nggak usah dibanting-banting lagi sama anak saya. Thank you. So we've been working on the YouTube Go app with the sole objective of making all of YouTube's content of videos uh, available for everybody. All right, enough suspense. I'd like to now invite Dan, our UX lead on YouTube Go, who will show you the app and how it works. Dan. Hi, everyone. I'm so thrilled to have this opportunity to share YouTube Go with you all. YouTube Go is all about performance. As I walk you through this app, you'll notice how YouTube Go is different from the main YouTube app. And that's because to maximize the app's performance, we build it with four major goals in mind. First, we wanted it to be relatable, with a simple user interface that gives each user easy access to their favorite videos. As I launch the app, you'll notice that the home feed launches with 10 instant video recommendations. Great for simplicity and choosing content to download. A simple tap on the Show More button yields 10 more videos, and every day new recommendations are pushed to the users. Now, in addition to the home screen, we have also ensured that YouTube Go is the easiest place for users to search for their favorite videos. Zubair mentioned one of our creators' Cameo project earlier. Let's see if we can find some of their videos so we can watch in our downtime later. Go up to search, type in Cameo project. There we go. That looks pretty good. Perfect. Now, this is where things get noticeably different. That's because our second goal 
was to make it work when there's low or no connectivity. Because YouTube Go has been built with downloading as the primary use case, we want to give people a preview of the video. If you were streaming all your videos, you could just watch a few It loads instantly, even with intermittent connectivity, and provides some much needed understanding of whether this video is right for you. Our third goal was to tackle the cost of data giving users more transparency about how big file sizes will be, so you can see below the preview that we have a few different options for quality. How much, uh, so users can make an informed decisions. How much space do they have on their device, or how long are they willing to wait before watching it? Let's go ahead and select standard quality and hit download. There we go. As you can see, we also have a downloads tab showing that my download has begun. Now, if we had stopped, YouTube Go offers personalized recommendations that users can browse and download. This works even when offline and allows users to control their quota. But after witnessing how people actually can download their favorite videos and then So as Dan showed you, YouTube Go is all about being relatable, connected, cost conscious, and social. It's really been built for the environment and the users that will use it. We are thrilled to bring YouTube Go to Indonesia over the next few months because video, we strongly believe video is an incredible way for people to connect, to explore their passions, to learn something new, and even share something unique with the rest of the world. And we hope that by bringing YouTube Go here, we can help Indonesians tell even more amazing stories and inspire the next generation of Indonesian creators to reach audiences not just here, but all around the world. If you'd like to be among the first to find out when the when the app is ready, we are committed to bringing the full promise of YouTube to Indonesia and give all the people here the experience that they deserve. Terima kasih. And now I'd uh, like to invite Tony back on stage for for some closing remarks. Tony. Thank you, Zubair. Well, we're almost at the end of our event, and I just wanted to say that we at Google are just so proud to be here in Indonesia. Now, we couldn't be more optimistic about the future of the country and about the role that the internet can play in it. You know, to summarize, Google's committed to helping Indonesians through improving access to the internet. You know, today we announced Google Station rolling out across Java, and Bali in the next year to bring better public Wi-Fi. And helping Indonesians by making our own products more relevant, you know, to people's everyday lives here. You know, products like Search, Waze, YouTube, Duo, Allo, Go. Many, many more of those will continue to come. And helping Indonesians shape the internet by building platforms and skills for developers, you know, startups, students, parents, to help transform Indonesia into the digital powerhouse of Southeast Asia. Now, you heard Zubair talk about Cameo Project. Yeah, they've been visiting schools and communi communities right across the country, spreading their message, you know, and empowering other young creators to make positive videos. So thank you so much for spending the morning with us. And I would now like to introduce the YouTube sensation Cameo Project. Please enjoy. Kenangan kami, Cameo Project. Ada Martin Andri dan Yosi, Echa dan yang aneh si Bobby, Steve yang serius dan lucu. Jadi kita menabrak semua ketabuan yang yang jadi harapan masyarakat gitu loh. Sampaikan ketidaksetujuan kita atas apa yang terjadi dengan cara berkarya. Jadi kita bisa menyampaikan kritikan kita, sekaligus kita bisa membuat orang tertawa. Kita mau bagikan spirit itu ke teman-teman yang ada di daerah. Lewat uh, YouTube Creator for Change in Impact Project, kita namanya One Indonesia. Kita akan melakukan tour 10 kota di Indonesia. Salah satu pilarnya YouTube adalah uh, menjaga freedom of speech workshop tentang gimana bikin konten yang konten kreatif yang positif. 
Kita mau mengajak anak-anak muda yang kita taruh di YouTube itu. Cameo Project menginspirasi saya untuk menyadari apa, apa saja isu-isu yang ada di sekeliling kita. Jadi video yang kami buat tadi adalah mengenai tentang rasis. Pandang rasis itu tidak gaul. Dan ketika melihat sesuatu yang salah itu, kita perlu keberanian untuk kasih tahu orang lain kalau ada sesuatu yang nggak benar dan harus berubah. Yang paling penting lagi adalah kita harus berani ngubah diri kita sendiri. Sisanya pasti ikut. Kami Project One Indonesia. One Indonesia. One Indonesia. Hey. Hey. Oke, okay, selamat siang selamat semuanya. Selamat siang. Good afternoon. Kita ingin perkenalkan kamilah Cameo Project. Yes. Featuring beberapa teman-teman yang juga adalah content makers atau YouTubers bahasa populernya. We are Cameo Project and featuring our Go. friends. Oh, you uh, need to translate it. A lot of here, so oh, okay. I have to translate in English. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Jadi... Kami bangga sekali bisa uh, terpilih menjadi Creator for Change dari Indonesia. Yes. Uh, we are so proud uh, that... <laughs> so proud, cukup, so cukup, proud. Cukup, cukup. Uh, go on, go on, go on. Oke. Okay. Dan uh, kita melakukan kegiatan kita keliling Indonesia. Uh, tahun ini ada 10 kota yang terpilih. Yeah. Kita seminar dan juga workshop uh, dengan pelajar, SMA dan kuliah. Kita membagikan virus positif dan supaya mereka yang di daerah bisa belajar membuat konten. Bukan cuma skill tapi juga uh, sesuatu yang positif yang bisa dibagikan oleh mereka. Supaya konten positif di, di Youtube dan di dunia digital online itu semakin banyak. Yes. Betul. If you don't understand you can see the subtitle here. Gak ada. Huh? There's no Gak subtitle. Ada. Gak ada subtitle. Oke. Okay. Aman. Kita jarang sekali uh, perform live on stage. Biasanya kita perform... On the video. So, uh, pada siang hari ini kita akan membawakan sebuah lagu ciptaan kita juga, yaitu This is YouTube Anthem Indonesia. One, two. Ooh, 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 ooh. Kami kenalkan who we are. Kami bukan dari TV dan layar lebar. Nonton kami juga enggak bayar. Semenjak digital jadi heroes. Kami pun exit lewat videos. Ciptakan inspirasi bukan chaos. Cari ide gila untuk di expose. Bikin tips ini, bikin tips itu. Bikin vlog vlog tapi yang bermutu. Bermain musik juga asik. Atau bikin video video lucu. But there's no limit untuk kreasi. Karena semua bisa diproduksi dan segera. Kala umur bisa nikmati. That's why we need to be hati-hati. Cause people watching you, people watching you, they like or dislike you. They like or dislike you, yeah. When people watching you, what you say, what you do, tanggung jawabmu. This is what we do. Di YouTube. This is what we do, YouTubers, content hey, makers, hey, creators of Indonesia. Dobre, uh, uh, dobre, ah, come on. Boleh tepuk tangannya? Give it up, Yosef. Kami all project sekarang terpilih jadi creator for change pun untuk beraksi. Keliling Indonesia kita berbagi, lahirkan creators yang menginspirasi. Setiap creators punya ciri masing-masing. Pictures, editing, dan juga acting. Kritik dan masukan, itu pasti penting. Haters will be haters, harus tahan banting. Di channel Youtube, memang harus banyak konten. Baik mendidik, tibur, tapi juga paten. Kalau yang baik itu kata lo gak keren, tapi itu gue. I'm cool with that, my friend. Cause there's no limit untuk kreasi. Karena semua bisa diproduksi. And segala umur bisa nikmati. That's why we need to be hati-hati. Cause... People watching you. People watching you. They like or dislike you. They like or dislike you, yeah. People watching you. What you say, what you do. Tanggung jawabmu. This is what we do. Di YouTube. Di YouTube. This 
is what we do. YouTubers, hey, hey. makers, hey. creators of Indonesia, dobre, dobre, ah, this is what we do. Di YouTube, di YouTube, dari Nielsen, boom. This is what we do. YouTubers, content makers, creators of Indonesia, dobre. Thank you very much. Thank you, YouTube and Google.